G'day and welcome to the Early Crow episode 43, brought to you by Makita. Right now, get amazing bonuses with selected Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt kits and combos. Limited time only. Visit makita.com.au for details. Makita XGT. More intelligent, more efficient, more power, more Makita. Boys, how are we? Uh, a phenomenal one of the great Saturdays all time. Uh, just a glorious weekend. Captain's run. Uh, if they all go like that, um, I don't know. We, like No one's going to need to work, put it that way, internally. <laughs> how fat was it? Um, Captain's run outstanding. Saturday, great. Sunday, a bit of a setback on every front. Um, Tommy, how you going? How's your ankle? Yeah, ankle's going well, progressing nicely off the uh, crutches, which is nice. Um, hopefully another just another week in the boot and we'll see how we are next week and uh, progress again. But, yeah, it was a beautiful Saturday. Um, sort of, in turn, like myself, just a few little shit bets in Sydney that just shouldn't have happened and forcing them, things like that. But you live and learn. But Melbourne was, uh, Caulfield was just, just Christmas. It was great. Um, finding the right horses, the right part of the track was Elite Captain Electric was just oh, I was count my cat count me cash seven hundred out. Thank you very much. D Lane absolutely had pony arms were sore coming into the four hundred and just let it go. So um, even Farago like from the back and then sort of wow. got a bit wobbly, didn't he? At the, when he yeah. hit the lead, it sort of stopped. I was like, oh no, what's yeah. happening here? Yeah. Um, but it's it's amazing when that happens. Eh? Like you're in run, you're going oh fucking hell, it's last. And then you're like. Oh, hang on, we're travelling to Lux, and then within a blink of an eye, like, oh shit, hold on, to go straight. It's uh, it's nice <laughs> when they're Coaster coming around. Emotion. The, it's nice when they're coming around that Caulfield bend, and they're making up ground, and they haven't touched it. You're like, oh yeah, we've got pony, yeah. and they're just travelling. Uh, but it was it's on yeah, that it it's nice. on that camera angle, like in Sydney and in Melbourne, like reversed when they're they're coming, they're cornering. And if you're if you're on a back marker and you're making ground while your bloke's just sitting mm. quiet as a church mouse, and then that's like that's box tick number one, and then box tick number two is when they pan to the other angle, <laughs> and he has oh he has it's almost leveled up. <laughs> oh, we're on here! It's absolutely glorious. Now Patch is being modest, which yeah, full credit to him. He's a high profile athlete in Australia. If he's not modest, I'll cut him down. That's what we do. I'm not high profile. I aren't modest. I um happy to sort of put my shoulders back and tell everyone how good I am when I need to. But I'm going to do it for Tom right now. You, you, what you did on Saturday was um, classy. It was discipline. And it was uh, a thing of beauty to what you evolved as a punter. You worked your way through a very tricky day at Ranwick or Rose Hill, wherever it was, and you found value at the back end of the card. Now, I'm grateful for it. I don't know how we're going to get that information to the punter anytime soon. But with an evolving wet winter track at, at Ranwick, was it? Yeah. You really got through your work and you found a way. You are progressing as a punter rapidly. What do you think about that? It was um, it was actually nice to uh, actually sit down on a Saturday um, and sort of do what you do where you're full-time at it and you're uh, making adjustments as you go, map positions and things like that where you, sometimes I just sort of sit and forget, so... Especially with the changing track like it was on Saturday, I had to adapt and um, things like that. So I uh, made a bit of a blue with World Alliance and then probably from there, uh, it wasn't an official bet um, on the Crow, but I actually uh, went uh, went a little bit harder than I probably should have. Um, but from, yeah, so we, we'll forget that. But uh, after that, I sort of made an adjustment and you could see the pattern was clearly outside there from that race and then... Um, found a few, found Invader Zim, double pressed uh, Fleetwood. Was that, was that uh, Karen Peach, Invader Zim? Yeah, well, it was slow away early as well. Um, yeah, and probably, white lines. probably to its um, like advantage, it was slow away because then I think it might have been mm. cuddled up a bit, got to the outside. Um, Flindale was called a Nash Road, um, <laughs> which, is, which is quite interesting, but. Um, <laughs> If there's an asteroid in Bunyip, I was like, what the fuck? What the, what's going on there? But, um, but, um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a good day. It was nice sitting there and just adjusting on the go and doing what um, the professionals do, do, I suppose. I think you're absolutely airborne. You're going better every every week. 
Proudy, how was your Saturday? Yeah, it was good, mate. And uh, shout out to all the Crow family. You just heard us uh, having a nice winning day in Sydney when uh, they only won a tiny bit. So they'll be racked hearing that from us. But uh, oh, Sorry. Look, we're doing our best. You win uh, 100% overall. you're doing your Look, best. I'm, uh, just I'm just tell the truth. Tom is evolving rapidly as a punter, and it's going to be to all of our benefit. Um, P-Rat, your Saturday, um, how's the schedule like? What's it like now as a... As a full-time father, I've got no doubt, like, you're ripping in, you're one of the great dad's parenting's ever seen. Balancing that with your, I won't say addiction, but your your love, gamble responsibly, 1-800-858-858. That was a joke. Uh, um, what, how are you balancing that with your love of the pony? and the? Pony? Well, I've got one for you. At one point, Michelle goes, what are we on here? And I, and I just turned her and just had a look and said, Sorry, do, have we both invested here or have I just invested? Like, it's currently me that's on it. You can hand over a little bit of cash if you want to be invested as well. That's no drama. Did she hit you? No, she didn't. No, nah, not at all. Nah, Still had recovering, is um, she? Mate, things have been going good. I've been uh, been able to ditch the getting up every three hours. He's put on a bit of weight. He lost a fair bit of weight um, after Michelle had a cesarean. So, most importantly, the kids are all happy and healthy, which is the best part. Um, Michelle knows that I love sitting there on a Saturday and watching the races, so... I made sure Saturday morning I did as much as I could, did all the washing, do all the right things first and just make sure she's set up for a good day. Um, and then we basically sat down on the couch. I think she was watching Grey's Anatomy on her phone and uh, and I sat there and consumed four and a half, four and a half hours of eyes on ponies. But, um, geez, the, I was just thinking, how good would this cherry on top be here with the open in the last? Just sitting oh. there, I was like, how good is this going to be? It's... We, I think we backed it on your your subscription at seven dollars. I think we're on at four dollars fifty ish after deductions. It's sitting around the three dollar mark, and you're just thinking, look at all these boxes aligning. It's drawn outside. Mm. It's going to be in the right part of the track, and then lands OSL. The oh, elastic band gets just, stretched a little bit. Like as I was saying before, like Tom's modest. I'm not. Saturday was probably the greatest fucking set ever produced by a human being. And the adjustments on the run were outstanding. We got jammed in race one by one of the... the have you seen the numbers out of race one, Tom? No, it was a big... Like, if Iron Velvet repeats the dose, it'll win a fucking group one. And it it's was... Cool. Like, and it was... <laughs> well, and yeah. Oh, oh mate. mate. That thing could be mate. fucking anything. Oh, no. And then in the last race, the only other, only other race we lost, we've run second, third, and fourth. Jammed in the Danusta by John McNeil Peach on Rhapsody Sheik, who from an inside draw, which was... Absolutely not oh. where you wanted to be on Saturday. He somehow just got off the fence. Great ride, Jai. Yeah. But it got us pretty. The and Jason on the line, too. Oh, it was, it it was the last, been last leg of a multi Christmas. and like, would have been legit Christmas, like proper Christmas if I hit this multi. And like, I, I, Annie just finished work and like, she's like, yeah, just had a shower and we'll go out for dinner. So we went out for dinner and I'm just sitting at dinner like, fuck me. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just thinking about it the whole time, like, fucking hell, it could have been one of the greatest days ever. Would have just, like, covered all of spring, like, just, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, it's a great game. We move on to next week. Uh, yeah, but, one of the great Saturdays. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the captain's run. Uh, if everything goes as planned, you'll, you'll cop it again uh, Thursday night, Friday morning this week. Um... Should we move on to the AFL and should we just rip the band-aid off first and talk about Sunday the SCG or do we want to start with, um, you know, some other stuff that's going on? I mean, there's we'll the crowd at the Melbourne Bombs. game that I want to talk about. Um, there's a few other things that sort of I saw on the weekend that interest me, but should we rip the band-aid off, Tom? Yeah, we'll start the Swans. I don't know what horse is going to do to get you boys to fire up at the start of a start of a game. Um I'd say that was the most disappointing performance of the year so far. You? Yeah, it was. It was. Um, I haven't watched the game like uh, in the stands for a while. We'll see on the bench last week for a half a game, but it was. Uh, it's, it's it's very tough and um, it's a lot easier from the stands. I tell you that much. Um, and you sort of you could see it uh, happening a little bit the way we started. We were thinking, fucking hell, like not looking good. The Bulldogs are on, and full credit to them. They sort of played really well. I've said from the start, I think they're a good side. Um, they certainly were on on Sunday, and we were we were way off, and we got our uh, pants pulled down. So we've got a bit of work to do with we're, um, that we will do, and I think a lot of teams have gone through it. Brisbane at the start of the year, Collingwood have gone through it, Carlton are going through it now. We're going through it. Um, it's just a part of footy, and you got to you got to get out of it quickly, or 
things turn bad. So, um, yeah, we'll work on it this week, keep working on it. And it's another big, big task this week in Adelaide. And um, could we be more excited for the boys to try and bounce back in a, in a big game away in Adelaide, one of the hardest tasks in footy. What is it like as a leader and a, a gun to, that's your first game this year, you've like, you know, haven't warmed up. You, you can't really influence the outcome, but you care so much about it. What's that like? Yeah, it's hard. It's just, um, you just see things unfolding and thinking, what the fuck is going on? And, um, like, you look down there and the sort of forwards weren't going great. Ever, to be honest, all over the ground wasn't going great, but you just want to get out there and help and you just can't. It's, it's, um, obviously, um, first world problems in a footy world, like, we're going all right. We've got a good good lifestyle and stuff. But on game day, you just want to try help and um, do as much as you can, but you just can't. So it's um, disappointing. That's part of footy. And um, other guys get an opportunity to, to try um play well. And unfortunately, we sort of – we didn't. So, yeah. We saw um, – we saw – it was actually a good game of footy. Not many people watched it live. Um, that was Friday, Saturday night, the Demons and the Giants – and Big Hogan, he's a, he's a, has he got the best set of Dukes on him in the comp? Mate, he's, he's a big, big horse, isn't he? I think, very legit, sticky. I think legit, um, he's the best one on one forward in the comp. And he wins, uh, I think over 50% of 1v1s. Like, that's win, not half. Like, win, mm. like, marks it against his, his opponent 1v1. So, like, no wonder they kick it to him, and no wonder he's going well in the Coleman. He's um, it's a good story, I reckon. Sort of a lot of pressure on him when he got drafted to go to Melbourne, um, and sort of struggled a bit in Freo and come to GWS as a fresh start. And um, yeah, it's sort of I, I really like it. He's a good story, great player, and looks like a great bloke. So full credit to him. But just hope he doesn't kick many in the finals if we play. Dicko, is he a chance to? Run down Kerno for the Coleman, you reckon? Uh, I wouldn't have a clue. I don't even know what they're on. But um, I would think, <laughs> I would think that his chances have been slightly hampered by the fact that Carlton's wheels are falling off as well. You know, if they were airborne still, mm. I'd be considering resting the big weapon. Well, at least looking after him a fair bit. But almost every team in the comps like needs to win needs to win needs to win there's so much up for grabs like make the eight make the four get a home final etc etc um i think the interesting thing out of the weekend for me was was melbourne and i'm thinking like do you remember in covid when they won the comp and there was like wealthy victorians like border hopping hiding in the back of fucking trucks and riding horses and surf kite on their way over there whatever they had to do they did it to get there to watch them win a comp and then you tune in season on the line MCG Saturday night there was more fucking seagulls at the MCG than there was Melbourne supporters they said 16,000 at the G oh, it, I think it, they're counting arms it, not heads that, oh, they'd have to count a few tickets that were sold I reckon that didn't turn up there's no way there were 16,000 people there or they were all hiding in the bars where it would have been a little bit warmer at least I think like this Victorian media AFL driven machine. Like the, the remember all the the carry on about oh round zero like too much focus on the northern clubs and maybe they were right in a way because there's a few Victorian clubs that if they're not winning, no one's going. How how are they financial? Where does Melbourne's money come from, Pratty? Do not know. There's one I do not know. Do you reckon their orders that minted that they just buy memberships and just oh, I'm going to Hotham? But this is the other thing. Everyone says that. Oh, they're off at the snow. No. Anyone who's got cash, like, and I'm talking good, like, I'm comfortable cash, are you going to the fucking snow on the weekend? No, you wouldn't no, you're leave not. the country. You're going Monday to Friday when no one else is there. <laughs> Makes no sense to me. Uh, the crowd is disappointing. I'm worried about where Melbourne's at as a football club. Um, Max Gorn looks like, the, yeah, it, they, they look, they look wobbly and their fans have deserted them. It was, it was a flat crowd. GWS were very, very good, I thought, late. They surged past them in the last quarter. I watched all of it. Their centre clearance work was very, very good, particularly as a game war on. That big Ruckman, he, he's like a um, he's like a Melbourne Cup horse in a way. Like He starts out slow in a year, I reckon, 
And as the games get bigger and September starts to roll around, you go, oh, that was a pretty good run there in the naturalism. He's on track for a Caulfield Cup, the big boy. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he's just like going toe-to-toe with Gorn and putting him to sword in the last quarter. You know what I mean? Like September roll around and he's just going to have a big September again. Um, Giants look good, I thought. Anything else we want to talk about in AFL? Essendon fans abusing the shit out of their players. What yeah. do we think about that, Tom? It's um, no yeah, comments. It's, it's uh, that's the sort of thing I uh, we sort of take for granted. I think the Swans fans are very, um, I think very supportive. They're not ruthless like like the Melbourne fans, the Carlton's, the Essendon's, the Collingwood's. But when you're going well, they're obviously a lot louder and um. They're getting up and about more than the Swans fans. That, although this year have come out come out in in waves and it have been really loud and um, best best I've seen this year. But it, it is known that Collingwood, Essendon, and Carlton fans are loud and proud. And um, but when you get done, it seems to be very ruthless the other way and very loud the other way. So um, that's all part of the AFL world down there. You got to you got to deal with the pressure. And um, yeah, Essendon were going really well and obviously. Like I was talking before, these teams that go in a form slump, um, there's a number of them at the moment, including us and Essendon, so that's, uh, they need to get out of it quick, just like we do, and it'll be interesting to see what happens at the end of the year. I reckon the, the fans are entitled to do whatever they want. They, they put the show on. The show is for them. Like You guys make great money because they love it. I think it's like crass, poor taste to, to do it, to abuse their own team. But... They're entitled to do it, I guess. You know, they've they they bought their ticket, I guess. Um, Within reason, I reckon. I reckon there, there's always a there's yeah, always a just line. As long as it doesn't go from. over that line, and it depends where you're sitting from, though, Pratty. You know, like, if they're just abusing them when they walk in, well, then it's not like I, I'm condoning that behaviour. I don't think it's. I think it's really poor, but they're just yelling out shit. They're not throwing anything and falling into a car or anything. And I think when you like, if I saw a Swans person doing that, I'd be fucking ropeable. <laughs> but when it's in other clubs, I giggle. <laughs> I don't know. It was, pre- it was pretty funny. Like someone throwing their scarf <laughs> on the oval, then someone threw it back, and he just threw it back. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I, didn't I'll, see that. I wish. I just wish. Or like, if I was minted, I would, I would. I'd pay someone to go and find that bloke. That you know that guy who goes. Well, we've been putting up with these fucking blokes for fucking 10 years. <laughs> so to fucking put one up them, get a fucking dog up you, Collingwood. That yeah. guy, I want to find him and see what he thinks. Uh, it would be gullible to see what he thought after the weekend. Surely there's a, there's a clip of him somewhere out there. Surely. He seems like the bloke could have found a camera too. All right, that's AFL. Um, on to next week for the boys. Um, Hogan versus Kernia. I don't have a clue. Who are you with, Pratty? You asked the question. I reckon if Mackay comes back this week, I think, and Kerno keeps playing, I, I don't think they'll catch him. I, mm. Carlton are more likely to play games at Marvel Stadium as well. Like, I haven't seen their, their run home, but surely they've got another one or two in the dry conditions where, depending on where GWS plays, and, and we all know what uh, Sydney winter is currently like and nice and wet, even when it's not meant to rain. So, um, yeah, I think... I think it'll be hard to catch Kerno. I think once you got a little bit of a lead, and yeah, if Mackay comes back, he he uh, he won't be able to be stopped. All right, rugby right, league, God's winter game. Um, one of the great backdoorings all time happened on the weekend. Manly versus the Chooks. Uh, I was on the Chooks minus seven and a half. I think they were about eighteen points up. Uh, there was other things to do and watch at that point in time. I flicked over. I was inside with the fire, so I'm just using the iPad on the one TV. Changed. Probably watched the Giants game, it might have been. Then I saw a WhatsApp blowing up. Backdoored, manly, um, very crook stuff. The Roosters, though, I thought looked outstanding and bounced back off the loss to the Storm. And the Storm rolled through another team and they looked comfortably Premiership favourites, I think, ahead of Penrith. But the Roosters looked pretty good, perhaps. Mm, they, uh, they're shaping up nicely. Um, then in the storm, and then also the Panthers. It's actually a really good NRL comp as well as AFL comp this year. I think the top four in the NRL um, is, is what we're top three. Who else is the other team that's sort of sitting fourth? Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's similar to the AFL. 
in like in a way. So it's like it's the Storm and the Panthers. Then the Roosters are kind of they're thereabouts though. That's the yeah. difference from the AFL. Then it's then it's a pack leaderboard. Mm. Yeah. Like, like anyone can sort of make finals almost. I think I, mean, the, I think the, the Rabbitohs might have dusted 13th. themselves. Mm. Yeah. Like and if they get all their pieces back and they all start performing, like you're telling me they're not a top eight team. I think mm. you said it two weeks ago, Dico. Like, you just need to get in. I think the NRL is going to be really competitive in the finals. They're going to be a great final series. And if you can just sneak your way in, you you've got to be a chance. And 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 the the scariest thing though, for the comp and for the other teams, Storm dominating, Panthers just cruising. On the weekend, Munster played for the Storm, and uh, Nathan Cleary came back. He scored three tries. Yeah, he looks to be. <laughs> We, I super coach captain him. Really oh, big. I big. made a big error for our our club. I brought in, um, I brought in uh, the South halfback now, like the usual five eight. Um, Silky left left handed left footer. Uh, what's his name? I what? brought them in when they were airborne, and Trell Mitt was firing, so he was just like setting him up and getting big scores. Then Trell Mitt's gone down, so he's cast. But for my team, I brought in Cleary for Hines. I think he scored 178 points or something. Or 100. Jesus Christ. Is he, would he, he, he almost converted every kick as well, didn't he? I think he went seven for eight as well. So that, that's that's some free points there as well. Yeah, boy. What a weapon. Yeah, uh, anything else in rugby league, guys? Just how good were some of the games on the weekend? Like, that, as you said, that Sea Eagles comeback, that, those intercepts... Where they were, uh, we you seen blokes run 65, 70, 75 metres. And I don't think there's anything better than watching blokes tear away from lines. And just even the, uh, I think it was the the Eel Storm game. Yes, the Storm put on a clinic, but it's just it's just so good to watch. I, don't, I wouldn't even say it was a clinic. They just rolled through them. Like, that, that's why mm-hmm. I think they're so good. I, I think Parramatta were a lot better than them. Yeah. But they'd never look like really winning. Yeah. How good was Melbourne's that? Like a, Melbourne's like a, literally like a tank versus infantry. You can mm. do all the right things, but they just don't stop. Back to uh, the Roosters game. How good was Radley's tackle to save it? Mm. Like, that was just some big boy shit. And then the boys getting around him after it was their lead. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a good man, that bloke, I reckon. He's big and thick. and yeah. He's actually not that big. He's not tall. He's just thick and Deep. girthy and, just, and just, just chops blokes and half for, for a living. Um, Yeah. That's rugby league. It's it's heating right up. It's good. It's good stuff. And just one more rugby league thing. How bad would it be? Like you don't have to do this, Tom. Imagine having to go and play in Canberra like on a Sunday mm. night. Oh, no, it was apparently it was like minus two there last night or this morning, and it felt like minus nine. Yeah, I know. And you got a truck nut. Like oh, oh, that's great. Real tough stuff. stuff. Um, all right, this week. The golf I thought was really boring this week on the PGA Tour. John Rahm uh, took apart, just beat Cam Smith and Joaquin Neiman by one on the live in the UK. Um, Piastri, who we forgot to mention last week, mm. he ran second in the Spa GP, which is that grass fast one with the big benders. Um, Mark Webber flipped a car there once, just going straight, see how fast they go. <laughs> Not an F1 car, another car. Um, what's his name? The British bloke that drives for the same team as Lewis Hamilton, Pratty. George, George Russell. Yep. He won on a one-stop strategy, looped him and won, weighed in light. Scratched. Wow. Yeah, so Lewis jumped up to winner. Oh, I uh, didn't even know that Red. was a thing in the G- Neither. I don't understand it. But Must basically, say your car, car weighs like weighs five hundred or two hundred kilos, it's yeah. got to weigh whatever when they finish. That's why I do know when you finish an F one and you see them driving around on the edges, they're picking up rubber on their tires to get heavier. Mm. Right, because they're still hot and sticky. Yeah, but can you imagine that? Like, fuck. Yeah. That's... So Piastri finished third, but got upgraded to, to second because of the the DQ. I'd call it a scratching. Of uh, of George Russell and the Mercedes, but the F one's actually getting watchable again because Verstappen's not just whipping them. Yeah. So That's I've just good. had a look. Once fuel has been drained from Russell's car, this is on ESPN. 
it tipped two separate sets of FIA scales 1.5 kilos short of what it needed to be. It wow. weighed in at 796.5 kilos. It needed to be 798 kilos, and that's what's costing the win. So there's obviously, because I know that they went from everybody just being able to spend whatever budget they wanted on their cars to now that there's they've got a certain budget to spend, and, and that's what's to try and make it even. I mean, Verstappen hasn't won every race this year. Can you try and do some more research? I'd like yep. to know, have they cheated? Or I think the more likely thing is he did a one-stop strategy, so he would have pitted like lap 10 or 12, and it was about a 46-lap Grand Prix. So like because he's just driven the rubber off the tyre, is that where he's lost the weight? Uh, having a quick look now... Doesn't say that there's been a deliberate. This is on Fox Sports. Uh, it doesn't look like there's been anything deliberate to cheat. And the um, Toto Wolf, the manager of Toto uh, Mercedes, was just said that it is unexcusable. I'm looking forward well, to watching that. On unexcusable Drive to by what? By who? George or by what? them? Yeah, by them for weighing in light. He's a big poached egg man, Toto. I can't so wait for this, this season of Drive to Survive now when that stuff comes out. That's, what, that's what what's got me for? into it. I used to love playing F1. Oh, on, on the PlayStation? On the PlayStation 4. Like, fucking loved it. Then yep. Dimmers would play it. I can't fucking wait to buy whatever the latest thing is. I haven't played <laughs> it for like three or four years. Whatever the latest thing is, and just say, Darcy, you can stay home from school today, mate. We're going to do FIFA <laughs> from 9 till 10.30. We're going to play FIFA. We're going to learn about structure, control, and tempo. That sort of stuff. <laughs> then we're going to do a bit of F1, blah, blah, blah. I cannot wait. That's fantastic. That's That was golf, really, with a bit of uh, F1 um, plugged into it. Uh, eyes on ponies or trivia? Olympics. Eyes on ponies. Or Olympics. 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 You are on. You're like, have you noticed, Pratty? He's just sort of lifted a couple of pegs. Yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's, it's, it's good to be around. We need to touch on this later, Dicko. There was oh, there was a severe lack of tipping at Kembla Grange and Kuna Barabram, which I thought we were going to get to, but maybe we'll cover that off in Eyes on Ponies. We can ask why, but yeah. I do agree. I think there's a little bit of a... Maybe on the massage table, not able to do much, able to get the phone out a little bit more. He's been all over it. Just getting the yeah. spendy days, like with Jazz, would be yeah. just, you know, bliss, wouldn't it? The we'll touch there. on that later. But um, <laughs> we... Uh, we're going all right in the. Uh, we're actually leading. We we're until today. We we're actually leading the medal tally. Mm. Four gold, two silver, and a uh, four gold and two silver actually. But Ariane Titmus in the pool is just mm, like just gets you going, doesn't it? Just like goaded. Like she's she's only twenty three, which is just extraordinary. Um, and, really? Yeah, twenty three. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, and mm. like that just just pulled down that. Just absolutely belted Ledecky, like, just convincingly. Um, so, she's... I think she'll go on to be one of... Did you see little, the mind games, perhaps? Yeah. Accidental the, or deliberate? I don't know. It, but in she, the heat? She put her gear... But No, in the final, she put her gear behind the lane four box. And then Ledecky come out, and it was the... She was like, oh, sorry. Oh, and really? Swap her gear over. Yeah. A bit Big of mind games going on. Oh, yeah, you like that. But, like, oh, I reckon she gave, gave Ledecky a bit of false hope as well in the heat. Just, like, yeah, I've got that much. She was in third gear in the in the heat and just come out and absolutely yeah. brained him. Um, she'll go down as, I think, great as a uh, best ever swimmer. Her, since Dawn Fraser, she's the only one that's gone back-to-back Olympic gold medals for women's. In her event, yeah. In her event. She'll absolutely and go Dawn to was a, there. Yeah, she'll obviously go to a... You'd think she'll go to um, 28 Olympics unless something extraordinary happens. She'll only be 27, and she'll go mm. back to back to back. So good to see. Um, Fox in the canoes was good. Oh, what a that woman! Was, what a woman! What an athlete! What an Australian! Good story as well. Bronze, silver, and then gets the gold in the in the. Mm. Is that her last one, or I don't know? She was the flag bearer anyway. But she, the previous two, she she's only young, gone she, bronze she silver. Handled the, she handled the, like, the pressure of that too and just, just fronted up. That looks like a very tactical, steady head operation. Yeah, that's proper. That, that'd be so hard, that stuff. And who was the mm. other one? That, that cyclist in the wet, like classic Aussies just doing it. Oh. Like, 
Some people uh, ate shit. Did you see it? They had to go yeah. to the cobblestones. I, I was laughing. Shout Harrow. I, Harrow I, couldn't I, ride a fucking hire bike in London. He's done his ankle, almost snapped his leg. Really? <laughs> These people are trying to ride. Yeah. He's, he, Harrow. Shout out to this, Harrow. We'll just go off topic time. here a bit. This is, this is one of our young mates. Great young punter. He went, he's in London. He's on, he's on his European, you know, adventure. He's in London riding one of those, like, you know, Mikey bikes. The lime yeah. bikes, yeah. Ate shit. Pushed on. Went to Tomorrowland. Day and a half in. Leg could, like, wouldn't move. Like, it was really? just about to pop. So Said swollen. his leg blew up like a balloon and he couldn't had, walk. Had to go on a drip. <laughs> at hospital for, like, four or five, six hours. Then went back to Tomorrowland like a champion. <laughs> and I said to him, I said to him, you can take the boy out of the Sutherland Shire, but you can't take oh. the Sutherland Shire out of the boy. Even better, Jeez. he messaged me saying, Dead Mouse Day 2, how good is this going to be? And I was like, you absolute prick. I'd love to go and see Dead Mouse play live again. Who's and that? then uh, I flicked him a message after Tomorrowland. He's like, "Mate, have not didn't didn't get to see him. I was in hospital on a drip." <laughs> Jeez, that's 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 good stuff going back. That's that's what stuff. That's what's made of. Oh, that's what's all about. Yeah. yeah. And uh, back to the Olympics. Uh, crazy game this morning in the soccer. The Matildas oh. six five six five. If you don't mind. That was and 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 season or tournament on the line. That is just ballsy, oh, yeah. ballsy stuff. Yeah, big stuff. Did you see? So, who did they play? Namibia or something? Yeah, is that yeah, right? Namibia. Namibia. Yeah, Namibia. Namibia. So they've they've got the two best in the world. They they're, they're the best in the world. And then the rest of them obviously can't play. They're ranked sixty seventh in the world, but they've got two of the best in the world. That's amazing, isn't it? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, and that was the one that was potting them from everywhere. Like, do you see that first goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Oh, we've had a we've had a team meeting in the house. We've been to ABC Kids in the morning. It's just Channel Nine. Carl, yeah. and his, whoever his partner is there on the show, catching up on the highlights. Lenny loves it. Lenny yeah, loves it more than Dars. She's <laughs> right into the swimming. Michelle said the other night at four a.m. feeding the kid was watching the canoe canoe racing or something. She was laughing at. She's like, this is, <laughs> yeah. oh, "Could not Michelle, be." A bit of respect to her athletes. Could not <laughs> be canoe uh, racing. <laughs> canoe. Whatever what, it about, is, what, what about what about Matt Hill? Oh, he's. A, Matty Hills decided not to call the ponies over there calling the rowing like two yeah. Ks. Mate, tell you what yeah, also is gold. Matt Pavlich calling equestrian. <laughs> is he? What? Yeah, Matty Pavlich is calling the equestrian. Oh, turn it up. <laughs> Serious? I swear. I swear. He's like, yeah, um, unfortunately for the uh, Australians, um, the the horse that buddy Johnny was riding has done a tendon jumping over a jump, so he's been disqualified. I'm like, is this Matthew Pavlich talking about the equestrian right now? <laughs> It is. One of the all time greats. Yeah. That's awesome. Didn't know he was a punter. <laughs> the best yeah, thing about Matty Hill calling the rowing over there is we've had three days straight of T B calling fucking thoroughbreds in Victoria. Yeah. Caulfield sale and a bit of packing and god plastic today. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to uh touch on that shortly in Eyes on Ponies as well for sure. Any more Olympics you boys wanna uh go over? Uh, might but, have to might have to hold fire for trivia. I think I've got a few Olympics questions Josh in here. So and the Boomers, good start. Yeah, mm. Boomers, strong stuff. Strong they'll they'll, call, they'll should push through now. Spain's a tough opponent. Mm. Jock Landale's a huge key for the Boomers. Him in the centre is playing a bit of bully ball. He's a uh, he's a big asset for us, and he uh, he he just plays the perfect role when he plays basketball. He doesn't mind passing. He doesn't care if he scores. He just gets up and gets those rebounds and. Uh, and facilitates a little bit. He's uh, he played very well. Jock Landale against Spain, very very well. Eyes on ponies. Eyes on ponies. Brought to you by CTW Excavations. They go where the big boys won't. If you're thinking about getting a pool done, maybe just cleaning out a, a ton of like landscaping sort of gear, find them on Instagram. CTW Excavations. Discounts for cash. Discounts if you supply dim sims and. Obviously, if you're a, a Winnie Blue inhaler, you share one of them, you probably get a little bit off too. Let's talk ponies. We've already covered off a fair chunk of it uh, at the start of the show. It was a glorious weekend. Recommendation, as we said he would. The son of Sharla came out. The girl just came out and they all just said, Hey, Blake, whereabouts? To- oh, yeah. You want to go? Yep. Yeah, no worries, mate. Go to the front. Yeah. Um, how fast are we going to go, Blake? Oh, probably about this fast. Okay. No worries, mate. Um, when it- okay, mate. No worries. And he just pissed in. He wobbled. Uh, mate. He- I think a bit of second up syndrome, Tom. Yeah. Any pressure it gets done or what? It's just like. 
hard I think to tell. he might even I think he might have even said if um if someone challenged me I I reckon I would have got rolled. So what's second up syndrome twelve hundred meters or um do you think it's better at twelve hundred or eleven hundred or whatever it is? Eleven hundred probably ideal, but it's a nice horse, like, and it's got a beautiful ability to put itself into a race. Yeah. I think they're aiming at a group race at Mooney Valley, which makes a stack of stack of sense. If I owned it, we're going for big races at Mooney Valley and Caulfield. Yep. Flemington, much fairer track. We lose some of our advantage that we have because we're so fast and so strong early. Yep. Um, I think great placement, full credit to them. You know, they've won two nice races and they've, they've won them both pretty comfortably in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, Shin said it was looking for the rail too. I think if it draws, well, it was looking for the rail, but the valley the, and goes forward like rail like a Blake, greyhound. Blake wasn't looking for the rail because it was fucking quicksand again. Yeah, at Caulfield 100%. the rail like, whoa, Caulfield, Caulfield, Caulfield. It is in massive, massive trouble that track. Um, God knows what's going to happen to it moving forward, but it's a real punters only track at the moment. Participants getting absolutely handled. I think. Like if if you had a horse that drew midfield or drew was going to like drew inside and was going to be midfield or worse on Saturday, well, good luck to you. You've done your money. Mm. Um, very very concerning setup moving forward for participants is Caulfield. I reckon they're going to have to look at changing the programming to give it that extra month and a half off after the Caulfield Cup that it normally gets because it's 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 up there with Randwick now, Tom. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a worry. This how's it going to last the spring? Um, it just it, it just seems to happen a lot, doesn't it, at Caulfield? And even Randwick, mm. like I don't even know what the weather bureaus are doing in Sydney, but like I spoke to a couple of other blokes that do Sydney, they didn't expect it either. So, and then you, it doesn't really rain on race day, like on when they're racing, and it just turns to heavy ten straight away, like. There's no rain all week in Randwick, and just it's just slop. And it was bad. Rail out 11 meters is probably a good, good thing. It was out 11 meters, um, because it's it saved sort of that well, 10 meters for the uh, the bigger stuff coming up. But yeah, it's it's a they seriously need to do something about the tracks um, in Sydney and some Victorian tracks, particularly Caulfield. It'll be interesting how Mooney Valley. So Mooney Valley, guys. Mooney Valley might be Saturday. It's Sorry, coming. Man. I know it's coming because I marked it in my calendar. It's either this Saturday or next Saturday. Saturday week. We're back yep. to the Valley, the 10th oh. of August. I'll see, see they give the Valley a stack of time off so it can rejuvenate. They mm. renovate it. They get it right. Caulfield didn't get that this year and it's uh, really suffering from it. Um, Fleetwood, Tom. How good do you think Fleetwood is? He's becoming an ATM. It was a... It was a nervous ATM. It's kind of like an ATM, like when you're in Bali or something, and you have to put your card in, and it fucking like made a weird noise, and you weren't sure if you're gonna get your card back for a little bit. Yeah. Mate, but... or even in Australia, I put my card into the ATM in Australia the other day, and it was like just started slowly going in, and I'm like, the card's gone. Just... Yeah, but you can just ring up the bank and get like stop it. Whereas if you're in Bali, you're like, yeah, true. What are we gonna do now? Yeah, it's um, um, it's an interesting one. Oh, geez, I'd nearly be against it. Next start, job done. I Double think money, I think I'm it's. Going home. I think you can. Um, the things you so obviously the f- first four races were sort of rails in run and then get to lanes five plus six plus, and then sort of from race five you didn't want to be inside at all. We have to come off fence and you want to be grandstand side Nash Road as uh, Fendale was saying. Um, but yeah, I think the horses you want to follow are Sakima in the first huge run. Um, Probably, yeah, the run of the race, although the fade was very good. World Allianz, complete forgive on the inside, and she's an A-lister as well in race seven against Fleetwood. But Fleetwood had the absolute Christmas. Sneaky Page, who, like, isn't much of a horse, he sort of runs in the midweeks, was sat outside it and got the same run, and it's nearly beat it at $31. Um, so... If Fleetwood comes up around two dollars, I reckon you're sort of better around the next start because it had all that sort of everything go its own way. PR, PR, as well as Invader Invader Zim, um, and Hide to Buy as well. So look to be against them three, I reckon. 
Nick Start. And the, the the recap from Caulfield in simpler terms, guys. Iron Velvet, Showmanship, Rhapsody Sheik, the three big improvers at the meeting. The big underperformers were Fats, who was that Kiwi that came to Fleming Center and ran a big fat number and then got its head kicked in on, at Caulfield. I don't know if it bounces back or not. Green Flight, I think we forgive it. Was wrong place, rails and run, back and buried. Willow just warming up. One of the greats, one of the big thickies of the Victorian racing community. Obviously, been doing a lot of big, beautiful humanitarian stuff in the Ukraine. Uh, he's getting his head back into it now. Wrong place to be green fly, but in a couple of weeks, Craig will be nailing it. And Cardigan Queen really was poor, but I think you can forgive it on the wet ground. Three black bookers from Caulfield are Ber- Berezka. Kira Ma, uh, maybe two-year-old, probably three-year-old next time you see it. Not suited at both starts so far and hit the line really nicely both times. Roman's luck, still a maiden. 2,500 meter race and was the meeting fastest last 100. Savage the line, Charlie Sheen style. And Walenda, oh, that would be sixth up next start. I think it's flying. I think it just needs to find the right sort of race shape and it will be uh, winning. That's uh, our wrap of Sydney and Melbourne in the ponies. Um, don't forget... You got it all across our socials on a Saturday, but the Captain's Run, new podcast, short, sharp, racing and sports, what we like, what we don't like, responsible gambling, gamble responsibly. That's out on Friday, so don't miss it. Should we do trivia, boys? Radio trivia. We've got about, uh, it'll be about 13 or 14 questions in the end. We covered a little bit off during the Olympics, so there's a few questions that have been knocked out. I'll try and reword them to uh, to get an answer, though. Just buzz in with your name, uh, and then obviously I will tell you who has buzzed in first. It'll just be one point per answer. There's only one. Well, there's three closest to pins as well. So I'll let you know those before they get going. Right now, let's start with uh, something topical, the Olympics. You didn't mention her name before. Who was the first Aussie to win a gold medal oh. at the Olympics? Perhaps. Um, what was her name? Gone to hell, yeah. <laughs> I know the answer. Do you? Mm. Um, her last name's Brown. Correct. But what is her first name? Um, Grace. Bang. Pats <laughs> off the mark. <laughs> what that event is? was it? The cycling. That was the next question. What event? Oh, this Olympics. Yes, this Olympics. Sorry. What what event? What event was it? Jack. Dicko. Cycling time trial. Yeah, that's close enough. Women's time trial. Mate, oh, I just women's said it, bro. Like you're going to give that. To you him. said cycling. You said cycling. Like fuck me. That, they were riding bikes. That's correct, but it was the women's time trial. Is that the right. same? That is no, that is not descent. And I'll tell you what, if you keep saying is that descent, yours will become minus pretty quickly. How many consecutive Olympics has Jess Fox won medals in? Tom. Jack. Dicko. Three. Incorrect. Oh. Tom. Two. Incorrect. It is oh. four. None of you get it correct. So four in a row. She's won two gold, one silver, and two bronze. Oh, she's won two gold, has she? Yeah. Yeah, should have done four. Hours, really. What is the new sport introduced at this year's Olympics? Tom. Paps. Um. <laughs> the yard. <laughs> uh. Oh, what is it? I fucking said it the other day. It's not skateboarding. Three, two. Is that your answer? Yeah, but no. Nah. nah. Dicko, any idea? Actually, I, can, I, can I come back? Because this is pretty yeah. like yeah, Break yeah, dancing. Yes. Correct. No, it is, it is oh, break no, dancing. No! <laughs> yep. That's not a sport. <laughs> yeah. It's in the Olympics and it's the new sport. Break dancing. Oh, what the? Yeah, that's big for me. It's only oh. worth two. It's only worth one. Yep. All right, so oh, it's half. perhaps two, yeah. Dicko, one. So... Ariane Titmus won back-to-back 400-metre freestyles. How many years had it been since an Australian had done Tom. that? It's 
closest to pin as well, perhaps. Um, <laughs> let me figure this out. Uh, for, uh, that's 60. 61. <sighs> Dicko's got you. It was 96 years. <sighs> Dicko's just loving that too. He's just gone. <sighs> 60, 61. Yep, fucking there we go. Easy but, as you like. Wait, 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 wait. When did Dawn it Fraser do it? 1928 was the last time an Australian went back to back. 1928? That's what it said on Wikipedia. So Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What was the question? Alive. The question, <laughs> so alive. the original question was, is who What's won the 400 insane, metres what freestyle she, back to back? Four? <laughs> mate, that's, oh, what it, that's what it said on Wikipedia, brother. <laughs> and and now, he's, now he's questioning himself. <laughs> I'm not questioning anything. That's what it mate, said when I looked it up. It's more Dawn than 60 Fraser, years, really? but it's not 1927, surely. Mate, Dawn Fraser, like, she won the 4 by 100 metre. Uh, she won Individual. the... Individual. In, she won Individual. the 100 metre. Anyway, that's the answer. We're moving uh, on. I'll we'll be here for... We need to check it. No, this is what they want. They love it when this happens. Uh, uh, Dick, are you going to fact check it? I'm going to fact check it. All right, beautiful. So is it, was it Dawn Fraser, Pratty? I don't know who it was. Dawn mate, I've seen Fraser. it the other day. Gold medals. They said it on their coverage last night. It was it was ninety six years. Dawn Fraser. I don't reckon. I'm not sure. It was she Dawn. was born in 1937, so I don't know if, <laughs> if it was her. And they were saying that like she was the last woman to do it. So yeah. the question the, the question was. <laughs> I had to reword the thought, question because you already spoke about. I thought that Dawn did it in like the late fifties. Yeah, that's all saying sixties. Yeah, like. No, nah, well, but yeah, it's, it's 2024, so like you're way off. Righty, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. On to uh, some things that have happened over the weekend or that are starting to get spoken about. Yeah, so um, going this back is... to that question 1956, 1960, and 1964 is when um, Dawn Fraser won gold medals. Yeah, but was that in the same? It's in the same event 100 meter freestyle. <laughs> Titmus became the first woman to successfully defend their 400 meter freestyle Olympic crown since America's Martha Norellius. Oh, so it's 400 feat, meter. Achieved the feat in 1928. So, so you know uh, what I'll do? We, we were thinking you said Dawn. Yeah, okay. So, well, that's perhaps said Dawn. I never mentioned Dawn. But anyway, what we'll do is because you were, I reckon I've made a mistake in how I've said it because uh, the question was going to be who oh, won back to back medals. So you're perhaps you're going to have a point. And you're playing Dicko, at home, you and you went sixty-one, so you, and you're playing against your friends. It's three, Dicko two. If you're playing at home against your friends, make sure you take that point. If you said sixty-one, all right? Because like, Pratt is a bit scared. So I'm just hang on, hang on. Wasn't it three-one? Did last week? It is three-two because Dicko got that question technically right because he was right. he was closest to the pin. But there's been a bit of confusion here. Who would have thunk it between the uh, the three brains trust the fucking three amigos on a Monday night? Anyway, <laughs> how far? This is closer to pin. On the weekend, how far in lengths did recommendation win by? Jack. Dicko. 3.7. Tom? 3.6. Yeah, I haven't gone big yeah, enough. Yeah, perhaps was closest. It was 1.8 lengths on the weekend. <laughs> Would have won by further if it went Jesus. straight, I reckon. I've got Peggy scratching the door. It's doing my head in. Oh, mm. Rightio. Murph doesn't do that sort of shit because he wants no. Tom to win. <clears throat> Who is the current favourite in the Cox Plate? Tom. Pat. Pride of Jenny. That's what I would have said. Correct. Closest... A follow-up question. Closest to the dollar amount on the agency I looked at, what price? $6. Okay, six dollars for Paps. We're doing closest to the pin, and Dicko gets one. It is currently three eighty. Uh, a blue. I would have said four, would have said four bucks. Yeah, Jeez. three dollars eighty currently, which I thought was reasonably short. Radio. Reasonably short. It's cancer. Don't poisonous. Radio. We got a photo through from Paps on Saturday into WhatsApp. How many dim sims were in the bowl that he was consuming? Tom. Paps. 
Closest to pin. <laughs> this is a disgrace. Nine. That's Dicko? disgusting. If that, if if this, if I have to say ten to go above that, and I'm right, that's the disgrace. Like you're a professional athlete. So what? You, so what? They were steamed him, Sims, mate. It's not that like a fraud. I don't think he's getting from the market. Like, he said eight. He yeah, said eight. 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 That is correct, Dicko. There was eight dim sims oh, in the bowl. I must have. Ate, I must have ate one. I must have. You must have eaten one. I only counted eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one or two. Yeah, one or two. Is that like <laughs> you know when you go into the Tim Tams in the fridge? The mo- yeah, from the microwave to the couch, he's already knocked off one Mate, or two. Mate, you go into the Tim Tams in the fridge, and the missus is like, oh, you got two Tim Tams? That's great. Yeah, you haven't seen the three that I consumed on the walk from the fridge to the couch. But anyway, <laughs> we've knocked five off. Heck, come the packet's gone so quick. I don't know. I actually, Sorry, mate. I actually um, consumed a Tim Tam just before, and I haven't had one in fucking a long time. Croc come over and watched the golf the other night and bring Tim Tams over. Jeez, they're good. What they flavour? Just natural? Just, just OG, yeah. Just straight up I and down. I love the caramel ones. Ooh, that does sound good. You've got to put Tim Tams in the fridge. Agreed. They have to yeah, come definitely. in the fridge. Yeah. I love, when, when I'm humming, I love to have two or three packets because they'll be half price at Woolies. And you, you, <laughs> you stock up and you get them in the fridge and then whenever you see the peanut M&Ms on half price, just fucking buy bulk and just whack them in the fridge in here. Ooh. All right, this is, this is a good question. It's not, not trivia related. Peanut or crispy? I'm crispy all the way. Peanut crispy every day of the week. Crispy. But they've got to be out of the fridge. Crispy, yep, agreed. Anyway, anyway, that was a big sidetrack. Radio. So in the NRL, which team currently has the biggest point differential in the positive? Jack. Panthers. Dicko. No. Oh fuck. Storm. Well, it's obvious, Tom. Yep. Storm. It's not the storm. Dicko, want to have another crack? No, no, no. Why not? Oh, and then you get right. a go. I'm happy, I'm happy to call that a draw. Cause it's... Call that a draw? It's the Roosters. They're currently plus 213. They've had a few huge scores huge this year. That's mm. what I would have said. No, I'm just being sporting there. That's not fair. Yeah, like... Fair enough. The... Well, we just we're... did the show and sort of said there's three teams that are going really good. Yeah. Mm. We've got. When uh, I win, ha- when I when I win, which I do a bit, I, I want to do it the right way, you know. And taking a cheap point there wouldn't have been that. So fair enough. Well, Paps is currently on five, Dicko on four. There's two questions to go. That's uh, one of the great wins. We've Come got from stuff. question from the weekend's AFL. How many touches did Nick Dacos have on the weekend? Tom, Jack, Paps, forty-two. Bang on. Nick Dacos had 42. Of course, I was at the yeah, a first day birthday Richard party Rudy. yesterday and somebody oh, tapped man, me on the man, shoulder man. when the game was on and said, Nick Dacos has had 18 touches in the first quarter and I thought 60 was on the cards. But anyway, oh, you had 26 and a half time. any chance, mate? How about you tag the bloke? Yeah. Fuck. Strange, hey? All right, last question and it is an AFL question as well. <laughs> We've got Paps on six, Dick on four. But there is a two-parter to this, so it could be oh. a draw, and then I'm going to have to scramble for a, for a, another question. <clears throat> okay, so who in the AFL lifetime, including VFL, who has scored the most goals per game that's played over 100 games? Jack. Dicko. Gary Ablett Senior. Wrong. Oh! oh! Can I finish the question? That is the question. So who currently, oh. who has the highest goals per game in the AFL who's played over 100 games? Dougie Wade? No. Perhaps his guess. Dunstall? Dunstall was close, but not him. Same team. Dermot from, from the same club, not Dermot Burden. Initials PH. Perhaps you can guess. PH. I don't know. It is, it is Peter is the first name. What's the second name? Hudson. Peter Hall. Peter, Peter Hudson. Hudson. Bang. <laughs> Paps cannot lose now. To the nearest decimal point, just to finish the uh, trivia out, how many goals per game did he kick? Dicko, you can start. You're going to have first crack. Five. Yep. And Paps? Um, I can just go for a stab. 4.5. 5.64 goals per game. He kicked, he kicked 727 goals in 129 games. 
Jesus. That's outrageous. What was wrong with him? Was he injured or something? Yeah, I'm not sure. He was a ruckman as well, wasn't he, from memory? No, 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 no. Wasn't he's he? small. No, he used to coach Gippy Power. Oh, really? Yeah, he's he's small. I must have been like thinking of another bloke. Uh, unless I'm thinking of the wrong boat, but... Rightio, that is trivia. So, Paps, seven, Dicko, what? It's beaten me the last... Yeah, I can have, I am your bunny. I can have head-to-head. I'll beat you, what, three times? <laughs> I'm your bunny, is what you're saying. Yeah, that's definitely the right way to say it. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't feel good. I shouldn't have been so moral yeah. before I should have taken that Roosters point. But like, Got him uh, squared up. That's sort of what I did to him when I played him in ping pong. Probably I didn't try and like, sort of completely beat him. I let him sort of beat himself a little bit. Like, I'm caught in bench. Like that. You can have that shot down the line if you need it. It's there. Do you want it? Like I just kept asking him the same sort of question and then every now <laughs> and again he'd just snap and force one down there. <laughs> Love it. Is that the uh, the week's episode, Dicko? Yeah. Look, guys, uh, that's the Early Crow, episode 43. Uh, really hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you loved and, and got something out of the captain's run last week. We'll be back on Thursday night, maybe Friday, uh, with another edition of the captain's run. Uh, plus, we'll have gear across our socials all weekend long. We've got the Olympics golf this week, which I think we're treating as a major we are, yep. And we'll uh, just have to wait until the markets come out to decide what we'll be picking from. It might be uh, just an outright winner this week. Oh, that's a big call from you. Big I think there's no top five, are. top tens, to be honest. I don't think there's going to be any markets. There wouldn't Nor be many there competing. Be. It's about gold, silver and bronze, baby. It's the Olympics. Show some yep. respect to the spirit. The Olympic spirit, pretty. All right. Top three is maybe, which is bronze, yeah? Yeah. Have to see what the markets are when they come out. We can't make any decisions. How do they do that? How do they do that? Do they? Do you have playoffs for like third and shit? Uh, you would have to, wouldn't you? That they have to have playoffs. Well, you never mm. know. It's Olympic spirit. Oh, yeah, unless, two, it's, uh, unless it's unless it's my birdies or something like that. I they don't know. gave themselves a. They both gave themselves a gold. Oh, in the high jump. Hmm. I do remember that. Really? Yeah. Was that they last like Olympics? A, they no, they like have to play off. Surely. No, in the Olympics in the high jump, they I, I do remember that. The the Italian guy and one of the other guys shook hands and said, maybe it was a yes. Canadian. I don't remember it. I just don't know where they were from. Yeah. Uh, anyway, across our socials all week, but particularly the back half, you're going to have the Olympic golf. You're going to have NRL, where uh, big Kingsley just stamped his authority again on the rugby league. Matty Punts um, also stamped his authority on being the worst NRL punter that God ever put breath into. <laughs> Um, and shout out to the, the crust who went 3-0 and uh, Eyes on Ponies slide Saturday morning quaddies multis staking plan you name it we got it I hope you have a phenomenal week and don't forget this show is brought to you by Makita right now get amazing bonuses with selected Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt max kits and combos limited time only visit makita.com.au for details Makita XGT more intelligent more efficient more power more Makita. Yeah, bye for now.